Uh, states around the country are starting to line up to make the in the internal combustion engine illegal. No, no, re- really. I, I wish I was making that up. Not making that up at all. Nope. Um, and so, ladies and gentlemen, um, they're going to try and force us into electric vehicles. Now, we live in... Most of us listening to this probably live in Iowa. We have people from all over the Midwest on multiple radio stations tuned in right now. So there's some of them, hi Illinois, that may well be forced down this road. Hey, see what I did there, uh, Mr. T? Down this road. You like that? Uh, <laughs> like that? Uh. Um, and uh, and that actually what 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 that will do with current technology is make road trips a thing of the past. Well, we're going to talk about which. Uh, by the way, I love road trips. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, someone who uh, might be able to help us about how all this is going to shake out. It's been a while since we've had Doctor Bonner Cohen on the show, but uh, you're very welcome back, sir. How are you? I'm doing very well, Simon, and I'm delighted to be back. Even though I I, I don't have good tidings. No, I'm I'm sure I'm sure you don't. I mean, I'm not overstating it. They really are trying to make the internal combustion engine illegal. Ah, yes, they are. They're going about this very systematically. The state of California announced a couple of days ago that it will ban the sale of zero emissions vehicles, meaning internal combustion vehicles, uh, beginning in 2035. And between now and then, sales will have to decrease over time. This is not going to stay in California. Uh, They're going to be copycat states such as the usual suspects, Iowa, Washington, perhaps Illinois, next door to you, uh, but also Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, New Jersey, and so on. If all of these states follow in California's footsteps, uh, by 2035, one-third of the uh, automobile buying of the public is not going to be able to purchase a gasoline-powered vehicle and will have no choice other than not buying any vehicle at all but to buy an EV. Problem. EVs are much more expensive than conventionally powered vehicles, and the price of EVs is not going to go down, as the EV manufacturers were constantly predicting just a few years ago. Instead, they're going to go up. They're going to go up because of tremendous demand on the raw materials, the minerals that go into the batteries that power the EVs. Uh, this is things like lithium, cobalt, uh, at high-grade nickel and other things, which, incidentally, are largely controlled by the People's Republic of China and when it comes to high-grade nickel, Russia. And this is where we are headed. And as the, the cost of these things goes up, so too will the cost of an electric vehicle, while at the same time, gasoline-powered vehicles will gradually disappear. General Motors and Ford Motor Company have already announced that they will no longer manufacture gasoline-powered vehicles after 2035. Mm. What we're looking at is we're going to have a man-made shortage of individual transportation uh, being because we're all being forced to uh, a, a diet of EVs when those EVs are not going to be here in sufficient number to cover our needs. They're not going to be affordable, and we don't have the infrastructure to serve those EVs, and we're not going to have it anytime soon. Right. I mean, that's a huge part of the issue, right? Because uh, uh, you're you're absolutely correct. There will not be that infrastructure to service those vehicles. Uh, Secondly, we're talking, we want to point out here, we're talking about the sale of new uh, uh, vehicles after 2035 in California, and I'm sure there will be other states that jump on as well. Uh, new, so you know you could buy my uh, my gas guzzling uh, Cadillac if you wanted to in California um, because that's a used vehicle. Uh, you, you can still buy a 50 
77 Chevy. No problem. Right. The bigger issue, however, talking of in infrastructure, is uh, while uh, we gradually decrease the number of uh, internal combustion engine vehicles on the road, uh, then it's going to be harder and harder to make money out of selling gas. Oh, that's right. And what will happen is gasoline stations will disappear. Yep. Ah, but we are told not to worry because we're going to have this vast network of char EV charging, charging stations around the country. Last year's infrastructure bill uh, provided uh, $7.5 billion for 500,000 EV charging stations around the country. Sounds very impressive, but, but 500,000 uh, EV charging stations around the country will never fit the bill. You're going to need a lot more. Mm. We, the taxpayers, are the ones picking up the tab for that. Question, where is the electricity coming from that will go into those EV charging stations? <laughs> yeah, coal-fired power stations, the my friend. Fossil fuels, <laughs> yes. Then you're going to be dependent on the local windmill or solar array for that electricity. Uh. That is a joke. It will never happen. Mm. So what you're going, what you're going to ha have is uh, you're making yourself increasingly dependent on renewable, meaning intermittent, unreliable energy, for the fuel to uh, fuel your EV. I think this is deliberate, uh, 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 Dr. Cohen. I think it's absolutely deliberate. They want to force us out of our vehicles exactly. and onto public exactly. transportation. Uh, private vehicles will be for the rich. Um, which is completely ridiculous uh, that we're entering a world where that uh, could be a thing. But private vehicles will be for the rich. And uh, uh, in terms of all of us, you know, Henry Ford, with his Model T, he would be turning in his grave if he could see what we were doing right now. For everybody. Right. He wanted a car for everybody. Not just the upper 1%. Right. And you could have any color you wanted as long as it was black. As long as it was black. <laughs> um, so, uh, but, I mean, that's, that's who we're supposed to be. It's supposed to be everyone's supposed to have a car or three. Um, uh, this is uh, really awful. And then you're going to get states like Iowa that will never outlaw the uh, uh, the sale of um, internal combustion engine vehicles, but it won't matter. It won't matter. It won't be available. Right, because uh, the big manufacturers are going to say, well, you know, hey, we, <laughs> California and New York have done this. Uh, we can't sell them there. And um, uh, I wonder what's going to happen in Europe, though, because I'm not sure they're moving down this road. Oh, oh very much so. They're going to run into the same problems that we have and Europe itself is already in the midst of uh, its own uh, self-imposed energy crisis. It's particularly acute in the UK and Germany, both of which have made themselves uh, reliant on intermittent wind and solar energy. And what happens when the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine? Well, mm. uh, bad things happen. You don't have the electricity that you thought you were going to have. As a result thereof, the price of electricity in the UK has gone through the roof. It has also done the same thing in Germany. And as winter approaches, uh, Europe, particularly the, the, the part of, of Europe that are northerly latitudes, are going to be facing a severe heating shortage. And, and it's not going to go away anytime soon because they're so committed uh, to renewable energy. And that is a very foolish gamble they have made. Very, very interesting times we live in, uh, uh, Dr. Cohen. Um, if people want to find out more about you and your organization, where do they go? Oh, yes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, please check us out at our website, which is nationalcenter.org. There you go, nationalcenter.org. Thank you very much for uh, coming on and depressing us today, uh, Dr. Cohen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you. We'll have you back. You take care.